medical self-help is an emergency measure to be used only in cases of sudden or extraordinary misfortune. If people require medical care in the course of normal, everyday living, they should always be treated by a doctor. However, when disaster strikes, you may not be able to obtain trained medical aid in time. There are many forms of disaster. They can happen to you and your family at any moment. This film is one of a series on medical self-help. Its purpose is to teach you what to do in an emergency situation when there is no doctor. Breathing is the rhythm by which we move and live. And when we stop breathing, we stop living. It's as simple as that. In thousands of life-threatening emergencies, victims who have stopped breathing are helped to start again by artificial respiration during the few precious minutes when life can be restored. It may be a home emergency, it may be a disaster. Whatever the situation, quick action counts for everything. Man can live for weeks without food, survive without water for days. But man must have a constant supply of air to breathe, or he dies. It's not too difficult for an athlete in top condition to hold his breath for more than two minutes. Within three minutes, even he will show distress. After that, unconsciousness will come. Within four minutes, brain damage, permanent, irreversible. Within six minutes, he would be dead. He's well past the two-minute mark. He tried to delay, but the instinct to breathe <coughs> is too strong. When we breathe, our chest muscles work like bellows. They expand to bring oxygen-rich, fresh air into our lungs. They contract to send out air laden with carbon dioxide. Fresh air ventilates the blood as it passes through our lungs, and the heart pumps this enriched blood to every part of the body, sustaining life and health. Hey, I bet the picnic's ready. Tell you what, I'll race you back. No, you don't. Let's not kill ourselves. Hi, where have you been? Oh, just running around. Dad was showing me how. Oh, that looks good. Here he comes. There we are. We heard the dinner bell. Hey, we got roast beef. Bill, you're out of breath. Don't I know it. Your son has been about to run my legs off. Hey, I want a large slice of rare, if you don't mind, please. Come on, come on. More, 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 more. And some lettuce. And some mustard, please. Are you all right? Bill Carroll is fortunate that his son keeps his head and has had training for emergencies. Jerry sees his father's face has turned bluish. Breathing has stopped, and he knows that artificial respiration must begin at once. He lifts the neck, tilting the head back. He pinches the nostrils closed, places his mouth tightly over his father's, and begins. When he blows, he feels resistance. 
He sees his father's chest is not moving. The meat must still be obstructing the airway. He turns his head to the side, reaches in with his fingers and removes the meat. He's successful. He has opened the airway. But the victim is still in a critical state. Breathing has not started. He sees the air he blows in is filling his father's lungs. He maintains a steady rhythm, breathing every five seconds, watching the victim's chest continuously. Its rise and fall shows his lungs are being well ventilated. At last, stimulated by artificial respiration, natural breathing is restored. Jerry's quick action probably saved his father's life. How could he be so sure of what to do? Because he had learned and understood a few simple rules taught in medical self-help. Well, that's a good question. Uh, and the answer to it is that if you don't lift the neck, you're therefore cutting off the air passage and the victim wouldn't be able to breathe when you apply resuscitation. Let me demonstrate to you over here on the mannequin. And by the way, you'll all get a chance to do this, so pay very close attention. First, lift the neck and tilt the head back as far as possible to move the tongue away from the back of the throat. Then, pinch the nostrils closed and place your mouth firmly over the victims to form an airtight seal. Blow in a steady rhythm once every five seconds. This forces air into the lungs and permits it to escape in a rhythmic cycle. Now, this method is the most efficient form of resuscitation because it puts more air into the victim's lungs faster than any other method. Yet sometimes emergencies arise when an alternate technique should be used. This disaster victim has stopped breathing. The heavy timber that struck him must have hit his mouth. His fingernails have turned blue, cyanotic. His facial injury makes mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation impractical, but the mouth-to-nose technique can be used. The head is already tilted. He lifts the lower jaw upward, making sure the victim's mouth is closed as tight as possible to avoid air leakage. He then makes an airtight seal with his mouth over the victim's nose and blows into the nose until his chest rises, repeating the procedure 10 to 12 times a minute. Expansion of the victim's chest tells him air is reaching the lungs. Sometimes it's necessary to move your hand from the victim's mouth during exhalation. Sometimes artificial respiration must be continued for a long time before results are apparent. Even when no signs of life are present, Work should be continued for up to two hours. When relief is available, time the switchover to take place without breaking the rhythm of breathing for the victim. Larry, how did you arrange all this? Connections. Wow, lucky man. You sure know the right people. <laughs> Clowning around together. Is that the. Come on, funny man. Hey, he's out cold. Larry was lucky today. A couple of his friends have had medical self help training. 
they know speed is essential. They begin artificial respiration immediately. Continue it without a break as support is brought to move him out of the pool. And as Larry is moved from the pool to the deck, they have a tough decision to make. A situation like this could mean spinal injury, and moving the head could cause further damage. But the need to start him breathing again to preserve life itself comes first. He's not getting nearly enough air. We'll have to raise his head a little more. More. Working slowly, gently, his head is tilted further back, establishing a better airway passage greatly increasing the volume of air moving in and out of the lungs. It does pay to know the right people. Mrs. Fairman's busy this morning, getting the children off to school, the weekly shopping, and keeping an eye on Michelle is a full-time job anyway. Can work that out without any problem. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Donovan, uh, could you hold a moment? I want to go and check on the baby. I'll be right back. This is no time to panic. The medical self-help training she had last summer takes over. Nothing can be seen obstructing the airway. Breathing has stopped. Raise neck and tilt head back. For a baby or a small child, seal your mouth over its mouth and nose. Blow in puffs, not too hard. Too much pressure could hurt a child's lungs. Keep watching. Michelle's chest is rising. Wait for the air to go out. Again, puff air in. The pace is faster for children once every three seconds. First signs of recovery may be a twitching of fingers or even a sigh. Breathing may be irregular. She continues breathing in rhythm with her daughter as breath and consciousness return. How many saved? How many lost? Who might have been saved? The rules for artificial respiration are simple, based on common sense knowledge of human anatomy. How well you know these rules, how quickly you can put them into practice, is important. Someday, for someone, your trained breathing can mean the difference between life and death.